guys, how's it going? I hope you're all having a really great start to your day. It's beautiful here, here in Eastern Oregon today. Crisp fall morning, but it's supposed to get to 80. No wind, it's just absolutely glorious. And we do have a lot to accomplish today. We're gonna start by planting this new willow shrub right behind me. It's called Iceberg Alley. I'm really excited about it. We're also gonna be making four flower arrangements for an event happening tomorrow. It's actually a candlelight vigil put on by Project Dev, which I've talked to you guys about before. It's been a while though. Uh, we did a big service project there a couple of years ago when we had a tour through our garden and it was just like this whole big event and it was a wonderful time. Project Dev is a nonprofit here in our area that provides help for people in domestic abuse situations um, and they they have all kinds of different services. I'll link those videos down below where we did the service project because I did talk about their um, organization a little bit more in detail. Anyway, they're doing a candlelight vigil tomorrow night to remember those people who have lost their lives in situations like that and then to recognize the survivors who have come out of situations like that. So they asked if I would make a few flower arrangements just for a couple of tables that they're going to have set up, which I am more than happy to do. So we're going to do that and then I'm hoping to go to the Children's Relief Nursery and plant up their four pots that we put out there for fall. I know it's kind of late but our fall has been just kind of a whirlwind so I'm hoping I can find some evergreens that we can put in as centerpieces and that will kind of take them through winter but also pop some fall pretties in there as well. And then I want to take you downtown since we're going to be out and about and I want to show you the gazebo. They have it all done. It looks so good down in the park. So anyway that's the lineup for today. I think we'll head out to the new property, South Garden, and get this uh, willow planted. But let me show you details here in the shade. Here it is. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this color. It's a zone two through seven. Grows five to seven feet tall and wide. I do have the tag here. It produces catkins, you can see right here, in the spring. And they already are all budded up and ready to do that, which is awesome. And like all other willows, they like a really moist situation, which is totally great for us out on the new property because we are um, you know, running drip to everything so we can really control how much water everything's getting in, on an individual basis. But if you have a boggy spot, a sunny boggy spot in your garden that's just kind of a problem area, this is a great one to plant because it'll help utilize some of that water. I remember in our last garden, we had one corner that was just a problem. Um, it just pooled water. It took forever for it to drain. So I ended up planting, I did plant this one, but I planted um, some other dogwood shrubs like the ivory halo dogwoods, birch trees, joe pie weed. I put asters in there. I put an alder tree and in no time, they had just sucked up all that water. Like they used all of it so that I could start planting other things that I really liked in that area that didn't like as wet a feet because I had things that would take care of it. So it's kind of interesting when you have those like little spots that you just sometimes it's a struggle to find something. Anyway we're gonna go find a spot out here and get this planted. So we've got quite a bit of blue over here with the blue spruces but maybe some a little bit forward would be nice. Also I haven't done a ton in this area right here because I kind of want to keep it low. I want to be able to see the cut flower garden from this view. And this is kind of where I was thinking of doing some more native wildflower kind of meadow situation. Let's go look in the other corner quick. Okay, there's a lot of planting opportunities out here in this corner. We just planted the crab apple right over here. We do have a couple of blue spruces uh, in this area, but I was thinking this is where we typically have a little bit of water settling. And even like right in here, it tends to take a little bit of time to drain. So I was thinking it might be kind of nice to pop it somewhere over here, maybe on the other side. I'm not sure. You know what? Let's grab it. We'll try it in a few spots. That might be really nice. I do think I'm going to end up putting a tree right in here-ish eventually. I've got a forest pansy redbud and a Corinthian linden. So I'm going to need something tall kind of in the middle here. So that might be a nice step down. That's where I'm going to put it. We just planted Brandywine Viburnum, which is a nice glossy green leaf, and then you can see the beautiful red fall color. But this is what we have during the season. You can see how beautiful that is, and that'll look really pretty with that next to it. And the Sun Eureka Roses, you guys are doing really well. We have some buds on them, had a few little blooms. They look really good. Next year is going to be amazing out here.
I love this shrub. <laughs> it is so pretty. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. Especially with everything else right here. <sighs> it's just coming together, you guys. This will be a fun one to see. I don't see these around town very much and I'm hoping that doesn't mean they don't do well here. Um, everything points to these doing really well. I mean, regular pussy willows usually do really well here and I know that this one behaves very similarly. I've got the black cat pussy willow on the west side, um, kind of near where we've got all the urns and it's doing great. So anyway, super thrilled with this. Okay, so now we're gonna go make the four flower arrangements and these are gonna be going, they said on the ends of like two six or eight foot tables. They don't have to match. They said anything is fine. They don't have to be super big or fancy, something kind of smallish because I think they're gonna be putting other things on the table. So I'm gonna go gather up. I think I want all the vases to match. I mean, I might even just grab big mason jars. I think that that might work great. Um, and then we'll put some together. All right, I've got all my stuff ready, all gathered together. Beautiful things. We've got some Celosia, a couple of different varieties. This is Feverfew. There's some Xenias and Cosmos, a ton of Dahlias. This one is all full of Dahlias. And then I've got some really neat things in here. So there's some other Cosmos. This is one of my favorites. It's Xanthos is the variety, I love it. Uh, we've also got some Snapdragons in here and peas, like, with actual peas on them. I did go with quart canning jars just because they're the easiest to transport. I can fit quite a bit in there. I think they'll be perfect. I did go ahead and put water in them and some floral preservative. These are just the little packets that come in the grocery store bundles. I think that's the brand right there. So that's all I think I'm gonna need. I might grab a branch here or there from right around where I'm at if I need it um, for like extra filler, but I think we've got plenty here. In fact, I thought I'm gonna just pick heavy and that way with whatever I have left over, I'll make a bouquet for the house. So let's get these done. Here they are. I think they turned out so pretty. So I did one kind of pinks and purples. The base of this one, I used the bees friend. I wouldn't cut that out of the raised bed in the garden closer to the house, but there's some really interesting dahlias in here. There's cosmos, snapdragons. Uh, in this one back here, I love this one. I think this one might actually be my favorite. I love the blue green of the pea foliage and then the kind of creamy cafe au lait dahlia but this has all my favorite colors the yellow and the apricots peach oranges really really pretty and i also use some of the fama white pincushion flowers in this one they have wonderful long stems this one over here turned out really interesting i kind of went burgundy red and white i like it i used some of the red spike amaranth i had to go back out and get that because i realized I needed a little bit more of a filler in this one. 
And then this one here, just oranges, creams, yellows, kind of similar to that one right there. And of course, behind every beautiful project and bouquet, there's a huge freaking mess. <laughs> This is how it goes every time, you guys. Like, we want to just take a picture of this right here instead of like, ooh, showing the whole picture here. Now, I do have a few leftovers, which is awesome. I'll put something together for inside, maybe a couple of somethings for inside, which is always fun. I plan to put all of these bouquets in the root cellar for the evening. I've got it like right around between 45 and 50 degrees, and that's pretty great temperatures for all the flowers here to store for the evening. So they should be really fresh looking. I mean, it's only one night anyway. I would be fine just leaving these on the kitchen counter probably. They just have to look good through tomorrow evening, and I've got floral preservative in the water, so they should last actually several days. Uh, Dahlia's tip Typically don't have a super long face life, like five to seven days at the maximum. Um, most of these were really fresh though, um, so they should get the maximum amount of vase life. So hopefully somebody takes them home afterward and enjoys them. But I think that they'll be nice and bright and colorful for the tables. All right, so now I'm going to kind of regroup and gather all the things that I need to go down to the Children's Relief Nursery, uh, which we have done several videos there uh, as well. And I have kind of talked to you about um, what they are. They are also a nonprofit and they help kids in situations like stressful situations, abusive situations, that sort of thing. Um, they actually have classrooms. They have all kinds of things that they offer to these kids. And um, I just I just have fun going down there and planting up little pots every once in a while. We've got four pots we put out there. Um, and so we go change them out for the season. We just put them out last year. So this is just our, right? second season. And we did plant up their raised beds this year too with just some fun annuals just for some nice color to bring in butterflies and things like that. So anyway, regroup, load up the truck, head down there. All right, guys, so I loaded up all the plants that I had here at the house, which included, I think it's a kale. It looks like a cabbage. I'll double check the tag, but a pigeon red kale, uh, orange pansies, and really pretty red celosia. I need centerpiece plants though. That's one thing I wanna do differently from last year. Last year we put purple fountain grass in there and that doesn't last through the winter. Um, so we had to come in with branches and greens and things like that. So I wanna change it up. And if I can find four matching evergreen evergreens. I would like to do that. And that way when the fall plants are done, we can pull those and then we can just leave the evergreens, maybe put some lights in there for winter. And then it will look different from last year. Also, I received a letter from a gal named Kim in Illinois. Hi, Kim. Uh, it was last either late fall or early winter and she was touched by our free flower day that we did last year downtown where we just cut a bunch of flowers took them downtown give them away um, which i'm still working on that it may or may not happen depending on logistics if we can make it work but um, either way we've given a ton of flowers away out of that space this year Anyway, Kim sent out a $50 gift card and she said, if you ever do anything like that again, I would love to just put that $50 toward whatever you need, vases or whatever. So what I'm gonna do today is use that $50 towards buying those evergreen centerpieces for the Children's Relief Nursery. I think that's a really great way to use it. Anyway, thank you, Kim, for sending that out. Let's head down and see what we can find. Bingo. I think that these will be perfect. These are junipers, blue points. Junipers do really well in our area. They're really tough. So I think we'll grab four of these that kind of are the same shape. This one looks different and it's a little bit mangy, but I think I can find four that look good in there. You guys, this is so awesome. So I got four of these junipers. They were originally $40 a piece and they're 50% off. So I got them for $19.99 a piece. So a little under $80 for the four of them, which is so awesome. And they look really good. They're a really nice shape and they're all pretty much the same height. All right, we've made it down to the Children's Relief Nursery. You can see the containers looking a little weary. Um, they get nailed with the uh, wind one and the afternoon sun in this spot. So I'm happy to see that there's at least some color, but they're ready for a change out, which is really nice. And it does look like like they have popped some emitters um, into each one of the containers so that they're getting water regularly, which is really nice. 
Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to get after it and get these swapped out. Got them done. I really like how they turned out. Just very simple, striking. Uh, I love the fact that the evergreen will last through the winter and then probably through all of next year before they need to be relocated out into the landscape. And honestly, there's room out back for things like this. They don't get very wide, like maybe four or five feet wide. Um, so they could go along a fence line, something like that. And they are pretty tough. I think they are a zone four, hardy to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's awesome. And then around the base, I did three of the ornamental kale and then three of the celosia and three of the pansies and i decided to leave the grass here because it's kind of wheat or corn-esque looking kind of fallish i'll probably pop it out when we come do winter stuff but i like the look of it and then i was going to plant pansies but the root system is pretty thick for that grass so i had a hard time digging in there so just left it simple all right i got them all watered in so now we're going to head downtown to show you the gazebo and there it is you guys doesn't it look so great down here? This park was pretty empty. I mean, there's still a few tables and, and chairs and stuff. This is a quarter of a city block right here. There used to be a really tall hotel that burned down. And so they formed this park, I don't know, 20-ish years ago. The mayor of our city actually owns this lot and he leases it to the city for a dollar a year. And they do Saturday markets down here, usually from like, ooh, like April maybe, maybe earlier than that. Uh, through I think they're still going or maybe they just ended I don't know it's usually sometime in the fall when they wrap that up and then they do special events and stuff like that down here I think it looks better down here than it did in our own yard honestly they did make it a bit taller so I think the proportions are better because the beams are thicker and it's taller so all of a sudden that really changes the look of it let me show you from the front doesn't that look so great so of course they poured the new pad and the new sidewalk here and i've got to get with them and see if they're planning on putting plants in here so i know somebody who might be able to help with that and you know it, it did cost the city some money to move it but they told us that it was actually about fifteen thousand dollars cheaper to pay to have our uh, structure moved and placed down here than it was for them to put in a brand new one. So it saved them money and it was in the plan to do it already. Um, so it was kind of a win-win in the end. So that's it for today, you guys. Just a bunch of random projects, but what a great day. So fun to kind of do some things for other people, get out of my own space and do something somewhere else. I always love to do that. And I was really excited to show you this. It took them a little while to get it set up um, and it hasn't been done for too awful long. So I wanted to get down here before the leaves left the trees and stuff because it does look pretty, you know, with the trees surrounding it a bit. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.